up, Blizzard Nation? Welcome back to Strictly Business, episode 145. Here we are. Presented by our great friends at Edge VR Arcade and Creative Edge Productions, who let us invade during the summer, so thank you. Here we are. On a bi-weekly basis. On a bi-weekly for now, until uh, we get closer to the season. There's still a lot going on, but we don't want to bore you. Yeah. We have a guess. guess. We do have a guess. You want to take it, Kathy? Well, you should take it because how did he end up here? I can let him tell that story, but how, how well, did he I end up here? He oh, en- how- I assuming he drove <laughs> no. unless you pick him up. <laughs> no. How did he manage to get on the he show? He won. Yes. And what did he win, Ryan? Uh, the guest host. <laughs> what did he have to do? Business. He shared, liked, commented like he does with all of our posts. Yeah. So, so we, had, we were running... For those of you that don't know that are just tuning in uh, for the first time after a great episode last time, um, <laughs> and they want to know what's going on with this Strictly Blizzness, uh, we had, as a promotional item for the first playoff game, um, different things that we did each day, and the last thing we did was provide a way for someone to come onto the show, and Nate won. Congratulations. Thank you both. And welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. It's good to be here. So, Nate, Nathan, how how do you want us to refer to you? I'm okay either way. Either way. We'll call you Nathan then. Uh, Nathan, you want to give us kind of a history of your time in Blizzard World? Yeah, it's actually a pretty cool story. Uh, Back in 2017, uh, we were out to eat, and uh, we purchased this deck of cards. Um, It was Sean, I believe you said. Sean would have been, yes, at the time. And I don't know what, what year this is from. Because Ryan's been with, how long have you been with us? 10, Ten years. So Must you've been, been with there. us since 14. So yeah. this was pre that. Yep. So. Yeah. So uh, Krista and I, uh, we were out to eat. We purchased uh, this card here. Um, well, deck, actually. And it had a card uh, for free Blizzard tickets. Um, of course, uh, I went up to the front office, uh, wanted front row seats. Um, <laughs> I couldn't get front Way row. Way to specify, Sean. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Not Creative Edge Edge VR, Sean. <laughs> Sean Whitmore. <laughs> You're on blast. Uh, but uh, I couldn't get him. Uh, fortunately, I met Ryan. Um, Ryan did a really good job of uh, you know, saying, hey, I got some second row seats. I uh, took those. Uh, and then from there, he asked if I wanted to buy the next game, and I did, and uh, asked if I wanted to buy season tickets. And uh, it's been history ever since then, and we've been with you guys for seven years. Nice. Front row now, so we love it. Fantastic. And I know that your – so we all change, you know, as time goes on. Your You've changed as a season ticket holder over the last couple of years. Yeah. Because I, re- I remember getting – messages from you thinking who is this guy (laughs) very very big football you're one of the fans that's a football focused fan yeah i i grew up playing football i uh played two years of college football as well i had a rival to Corey roberson's school at concordia mequon um but yeah um so i was really football oriented uh we were on a kind of like that win bit now type team uh, and so I had that mentality and I, I came in with a, I, I guess a winning mentality, um, and wanted that from my team. And when I didn't see it, I was vocal about it, but, uh, through the leadership and, um, really your mentorship from both of you guys, uh, it, it's more fun just being a fan, uh, and being involved in a, a community of acceptance than a community of winning. Yeah. And this year it came, it turned out to be both. So that was a fantastic piece and really you know there's so much we have to cover on this show and we'll we'll get into our season a little later but um the the winning part is obviously very important um to both the players the coaches the franchise it is very important um we had a lot of success this year and uh at the end of the day though i think the ifl is about more than just the game that's on the field, right? It's about community awareness. It's about building up your community. And, um, you know, that's what we try to do here in Green Bay. Yeah, definitely. And 
Uh, we've gotten to do some really great things, uh, you know, at the community events, uh, even, you know, as far as being friends with a lot of the players, uh, you know, like Charles Thompson, he was one. Uh, we got to go and see him quite a bit. Um, and then, you know, recently, uh, you know, there's a couple other players that we spent a lot of time with, Bakari Triggs um, and a few others. Yeah. The center. Uh, um, I'm just going to watch you <laughs> Crash now I'm gonna stumble. Here. Yeah, right. Trent Clark. Trent, Trent Clark. He's gonna kill me for yes, this. Yes, because As, you got his jersey. I, I do, and Kristen has his jersey. That's gonna be a flop. Cut and edit whatever you say to Sean. We just let Sean do what he wants. Sean's the good Sean, not the Sean that can't list. Excludes front row. Oh, Whitmire, you poor guy. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I, I think that's a redo. Yeah. <laughs> do over. Do over. Speaking of redos and do overs, he was at the game. As um, was Mark Shields. As was Mark. So two of our refs were at the championship game, um, which was really cool to see. So it was nice yeah, to so see them in Wizard Vegas. fans who always have something to say about the refs. We are very fortunate, blessed, whichever positive word you want to use there that we those guys are graded too. You don't just get a ticket to Vegas because you're a ref and they need you. Like they grade the refs and pick the best, of the best for the championship game. And we're always in good shape, whether it's Mark or Jim Schaefer um, leading the charge. I also had ran into a guy in the elevator and I, I'm sorry, that was my first time meeting you, but he was like, we got on the elevator trying to figure out how to get to the 16th floor. <laughs> I thought it was one of those Larry had texted me. I asked where the banquet was, and he's like, on the top floor. And I'm like, oh, this is that joke where there's a pool and meet me there, Ryan, and there's no top floor, not even an elevator. But you have to take a different elevator to get to this banquet room where it was. And I ran into another ref who is from our area here. And he's like, oh, you're half a strictly business. And I'm like, dear Lord, this show has it. The views and subscriptions don't really Kevin Guy uh, multiple times during the weekend, too. He's like, I love your show. Um, it's crazy. And there's another ref from our area who was at that game too. So there were three and I'm just saying everybody wants to complain about a call. That's like a thing as a fan, but we are very fortunate here in green Bay. And we are, yeah, we yeah. are. Let's, let's talk about keep the ref thing. Cause we have to talk <laughs> about it. I didn't want to get too far into the show. So clearly, um, and we found out in a big way that a lot more people watch this show than I had thought. Um, <laughs> So I need to do a disclaimer right out of the gate that um, the views and points shared on this show are not the reflection of the league, nor necessarily the Blizzard organization. They are Kathy. When Kathy's in a rant, it is Kathy's opinion. <laughs> um, and Kathy may not have chosen the right words on our last episode of what to express. Um, I got a lot of backlash and rightfully so. It was not my intention to point out any particular player or players. Um, we had issues in Green Bay after Mass was here, and we had issues um, on the field, during the game, after the game. And I aired, and I even said on that episode, we don't air our dirty laundry, and then I went and aired our dirty laundry. Um, I should have aired said laundry with the owners of the team directly rather than on this show and did not realize how many people actually we're watching. And then like most things, because it was a negative, it spread like wildfire. So not how we wanted to get more viewers by any stretch. Um, so my apologies to those that took it. Mm, there were quite a few that took it out of context. And then those were, there were those that had the right context, but took it definitely further than what I was intending it to be. So I apologize to all of those out there that took it um, to heart, uh, because that was not, it was an, it, we had an issue and should have just dealt with the issues that we had rather than voicing it on here. So with that being said, let's go back to the refs. Um, because those guys get a lot of backlash all over the place. And we, we did have Tom Fostinelli shout out to him at the league meetings, talking about what we can do from a ref perspective of getting better. And as a league, we have to get better. And he kind of broke them down into three categories, those that are really good, those that are mediocre, and then those that really need some help. And the problem is there are certain areas in the country where we cannot find refs. And so we have to do something as a league to either take our refs and travel them 
which that could be exhausting after a while. I mean, if you're traveling every weekend. Um, and we don't want the same guys always calling all the games. Right. I mean, the NFL doesn't do that. It, it's We have to find more refs. So if anybody out there wants to be a ref in the IFL, you do have to have some experience. You can't just be a armchair quarterback, so you can't just go out and start refing. <laughs> you have to be mobile, too. <laughs> <laughs> they, they can get run over, that's for sure. I'm mobile for those Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> Shout out to a sponsor. Yes. Dunkin' does so a great I, job. I don't know if you saw it, but at the last game, I got blasted with Dunkin' Donuts. You just got pelted with them? Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, she uh, took the bag and uh, threw out a handful of bags, and uh, they were all upside down. And it was kind of funny because I happened to be the individual. Oh, boy. Uh, and I think it was about 30 donuts just uh, bombarded our There section. were an excessive amount of donuts at the last game. So Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Not that you got bombarded, but it's awesome. <laughs> Speaking of uh, refs, uh, there's a lot of good refs in this league. Uh, so, you know, like Schaefer is one of them. And, uh, Rod on the sidelines too, but uh, definitely uh, they're doing their job. Uh, they are getting better. I've noticed that as well. Yeah, it's it's, and this is what we talked about. We had a lot of close games this year around the league, and whenever a team loses loses because of the wrong call or a ref that doesn't quite know the rules, and then you're arguing with that ref, you know, on the field in real time. That's just not a good look for our league. So we have to get better. And, and Tom's got a plan. He's, he's got some ideas. And we as a league just have to come up with, you know, what are we going to do? Um, you want to talk about the game or do you want to talk about, because we went to Vegas. Do mm-hmm. you want to talk about the game or do you want to talk about the meetings? Uh, you can go to the meetings first. I wasn't in them. So if there's, yeah. I don't know what I can and can't. Share, so, yeah yep. so larry was at the meetings with me it's not that there's a lot to share um you know we had our new team that's coming in next year which will be a great rival for us um out of what city ryan indianapolis uh they are the the freight fisher freight fisher's freight fisher's freight yep Did we say that five fisher's times? freight fisher's freight fisher's freight fisher's freight fisher's freight <laughs> Back, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> so they are the only ones as of right now that are coming into the league. I know there was some banter um, over the weekend about there's new people coming in or potentially other teams coming back. As of right now, there is no official Bismarck is back kind of thing. There's there's nothing along those lines at this point. So obviously we would hope that um, the Fargo team is back, but um, as of right now, we have nothing to announce there. Um, other teams, we have until September 1 to bring in existing teams, whether they're, um, you know, AFL, CIF, whomever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and nothing has been developed that way either. You will, you will know as soon as the IFL has something to announce, if we have anything to announce. So as of right now, um, you know, the we, we recently had had changed how we do our league affiliation agreements and as of right now everybody's back um when i say we redid them we we have an automatic rollover unless you announce that you don't want to be in sure. so um september 1 is the cutoff date so that's just a couple of weeks out so as far as we know everybody's coming back and we're adding a team do we know what conference that'll be in so they'll be in our conference because of where they are um obviously with having an odd number that's always difficult we we thought about rebalancing the conferences the problem is we don't want to have to go back and redo it again so we're trying to just sit tight for a little while until we add more teams there's a lot of development and talk around what could develop in the, could develop in the east it's just we don't have it and so we didn't want to change conferences so um but conferences brings up a a unique thing and could have been a really odd situation for us and that was how we figure out tiebreakers now if if we would have had a team that had done better head-to-head but not in conference wins and the other team made it and they didn't that wouldn't have looked very good to the fans Um, a couple years back we had changed it that conferences have to mean something if we're going to have them 
The problem is that we can't really bank on that because of our game schedules. We don't all play the same number of conference games right. because of the schedule. So that's going to be shifting um, from a tiebreaker standpoint. It didn't really become a thing. I think that the the right teams were in. Obviously, I wanted us to be there in Vegas, but the right teams were there. They worked very, very hard to get there. Um, being number three seeds, both of them, and then making it to the final game, that should be commended. Um, they, they did a great job. Uh, but the league meetings was more about celebrating the season, talking about the new Adidas deal, kind of going over the ref situation and, and where we're at, um, introducing the new uniforms and the look of that. So, you know, there's not, it's all stuff that we've already talked about on this show. Cool. So it was nothing, nothing new, if you will. Awesome. So, yeah. Um, let's talk about the game. You saw the game. I actually did, which is weird for You people. were sitting there watching the game. I was sitting there answering a lot of questions. Kirsten watched the game with me. So. Excellent. <laughs> and we were sitting next to Corey, so we were getting longer answers to questions than we probably intended. <laughs> so, And some questions, too. I mean, like, yeah, there was... I would love for Kevin, because I know he watches, or for the refs that watch, as to... Corey thought the upright hit should have been a live ball, because it hit the upright, then hit the net which by definition that ball should have been in play and it was not. You remember that? We got a attempted deuce that hit the upright and then bounced, but it hit the net after it hit the upright, which is where the question comes in. It was not a live ball. Um, it was weird. So he was questioning that as a coach too, as to what that call was. So Because that did happen earlier in the season. Well, it didn't yeah. hit a yeah. net. Yeah, it didn't hit the That's net. That's not a complaint. That is just literally a, yeah, a what's question. The real what was rule? the call there? Yep. Um, but it was cool. I did watch. Yeah, it was Kevin is a different animal. Yep. Yeah, he they held Massachusetts to zero points the entire half. Yep. And you didn't get to watch it because you didn't have CBS Sports. No, I didn't, but uh, I was watching on Go F- IFL, uh, just kind of watching the stats, who had the ball, what the score was. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Kevin, shout out to you, although I know you were playing our defense, so I guess we helped you just a little bit. <laughs> wink, wink. Um, You know, it was... I'll tell you what it felt like because I was going back and forth with Rivers because he couldn't watch it either. And he's like, what's going on? What's the score? Who's got the ball? Updates would be appreciated. And I, Meriwether um, got the MVP for the game. And it was funny because I was sitting next to Joey and Joey and I were talking about, you know, oh, who should it be? Who, who do you think is going to get MVP? And of course it was quarterback, right? I mean, Snead had a great game mm-hmm. and Meriwether had two picks or two interceptions, and um, he said, unless Merriweather, and just as it was coming out of his mouth, Merriweather went up and pulled what I was calling a Rivers, and he intercepted the ball again. So um, he, it was a great game. Wow. It was a great game. They definitely were prepared. Um, you know, they were all in at curfew, 10 o'clock. They were all, they were doing room checks and, Kudos to you, kudos to you, Kevin, because that discipline definitely, you know, brought home the win. Um, and a Merriweather, that guy's been around, I think, three seasons. I think he's definitely a vet. That is probably, I mean, he just proved it again. He's one of the best middle linebackers yeah. in our game. So, yeah. yeah, he he definitely had a great game, and and they, you know, they they took the game away, no doubt. They did it early, right out of the gate. Um, and they had a lot of fans there. I mean, because it's the West, that is one of the things as, you know, when you play in Vegas, it's easy for the West to get there. I think if Green Bay had gone, we would have traveled well because there were so many people that really wanted Green Bay to be there. I think we would have done a good job traveling. Um, but it's, it's a deficit for people from the East unless you have a fan base that will travel. You know, we're lucky that a lot of the people, I mean, you've been to a lot of the games in the area. You've been to Iowa, right? Mm-hmm. You've been to Sioux Falls, um, Cedar Rapids back in the day. Yeah, we, uh, we, we stayed close this year. Uh, next year, we do want to travel a little bit more, a little bit further, make them uh, destination spots. Almost. Sure, sure. And Vegas would have been a good destination, right? It's not some, a place that you always go. Right. So That is, without, well, we can't, I can't talk about it here, that is not, a thing yet right that was the last of a three-year game and that's still being worked on correct 
so, so everybody knew the three year deal was up. So hopefully I'm not putting you in an awkward spot here. But I, yeah, uh, yeah, no, I believe there on. is a fourth year. Oh, so okay. everybody right. was telling because somebody said that very thing yeah. to me, and I went, "Yeah, it's a three year deal." And I'm like, "Oh, this is the last year." And then I had a few of the owners say, "No, we signed another year." Oh, okay. And I went, "Oh, got it." Yeah, I guess we did. Ten four. So by the so. time this airs, <laughs> by the time this airs, I'll have clarification Sounds for good. you on Sorry, that. Sorry, Sean, you might have some edits. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, no, I don't think so. But um, you know, I so I here's my and again, this is my personal opinion, Kathy Trinkler, not the reflection of the Green Bay Blizzard or the IFL. My personal opinion is that if we are not able to have a packed stands that we should have, we should go back to a non-neutral site. That's my opinion. Um, and it's not a knock on Vegas. They did a great job of, you know, getting people in the seats. But to me, a team deserves to have a full house. The players on both sides of the ball deserve a full house. And if a neutral site causes us not to be able to have that, then we might want to consider, you know, going back sure. to a non-neutral. And I was a, huge proponent of the neutral site huge proponent and especially vegas because we were going to be wherever we go we would have our league meetings and i think part of part of why we did that was we needed it to be a destination like you were talking about nate um because a lot of owners weren't coming to the final game and it's meant to be an owner's sure. meeting as well got it so um I believe it'll be in Vegas at least one more year, and then um, we'll be working out whether or not that stays the thing, if cool. you will. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, game was entertaining. The guy at halftime. Did you watch the halftime yeah. show? Yeah. He did drones. I did see a little bit of that did on you? the website. Yeah. yeah. It was really cool. It was different. It was different. Not going to talk about that yet. Okay. I got it. I got stuff. He's got stuff he's going <laughs> to unload. I got but stuff. But it was cool to watch <laughs> yep. yes. um, on the field with it being totally blacked out and then yep. having them do their thing. And Disney's been doing that now down at uh, Disney Yeah, Springs. you want to see something cool, go watch the Marvel announcement from D23. 204,000 plus drones. That's what an unlimited budget gets you. But it is insane what that looks like in the sky. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. All right. Um, so that was league meetings, the game. You want to talk about the awards? Yeah. Um, shout out to all the recipients of the awards. Uh, we did not get best mascot. So sorry, Bruiser. Yep. Um, my girls had a great idea, though, for the IFL, is that they should do a video of all of the mascots. You know, you see that in the college game where the mascots are hanging out at a bar together yeah. and doing different yep. things. They should do something with the mascots. I thought that was a great idea. Maybe a halftime youth football game. That'd be cool. With we the mascots. Get, <laughs> we could get all of them in one spot, right? Yep. Everybody ship your mascot to Green Bay next year. and <laughs> I'll find we'll, somebody to wear it. We'll, we'll take care of that. Creative Edge, I'm sure, will be all over it. <laughs> yeah. Sean's not giving me a reaction back there. <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> um, yeah. So let's talk about the awards. Yeah, so two that were announced in between filming episodes. So congratulations to Corey, Coach of the Year, and Vi, Defensive Player of the Year. So those were ones that were known um, before the league meetings. Those were the, the big ones. So yeah. Do you have any comments around those two? Uh, no, it's well-deserved for both of them. Uh, you know, even the first team uh, for EJ uh, was excellent. Uh, you know, there's some players they definitely missed out on. Uh, but that's going to be around the league. Uh, there's a lot of great talent, especially when there's, uh, you know, a, a small market. Uh, we're not huge like the NFL. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah, there is a lot of talent in our league, and I think people overlook that so much. There's only so many NFL teams and only so many spots on those NFL teams. And if those players still want to play, they got to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And we all know what happened with the AFL this year. Um so the IFL was definitely the place to be um, to show your talent and to be able to bring your talent to light for those other leagues. Um, so shout out to Rivers. He had a great season. All of our guys, like you said, EJ making that first team, that was a, a great um, accomplishment as well. 
uh, you know, I just look at our, our lines. They, they were great D line, O line. Um, you know, we had a great season, so everybody should be proud of what the blizzard put up, not only from a, a game win perspective, but the stats and I'll touch on the stats just a little bit. We've had across the league stats have been an issue for the last couple of years. Um, I, I don't know if it was the archaic. And I, and I really can't say archaic because we made it work just fine. But other people were complaining that it was archaic in nature. But uh, the our stats collection is going to change next year. So you'll see those stats in a different level um, in real time during the games, which will help a lot of people that are watching. Um, not to mention our players because our poor players had to go back and fight for, you know, what they thought they should have had at a game that didn't get recorded. Yeah. Um, some of the other shout outs uh, in, in, you know, I, I always like to reference this one, not just because both of us have received it, but because it is so important to the IFL. And that's the John Pettit Award. Uh, Julie presented that to Doug Bland, who's the owner, uh, majority owner in Quad Cities. So shout out to Doug because that was a well-deserved, um, well-deserved award. And he got it because of how much he cares. He cares to keep us in check. He cares to keep the finances in check with the teams and not go rampant. Yeah. Um, so shout out to Doug for that. And then Fred De Palma out in NAS got executive of the year. Fred does a lot behind the scenes. You know, we see emails from Fred all the yeah. time about updates on what he's doing, things that he would suggest. Um, so shout out to him on his award as well. So. I've done most of the talking, so I'm going to stop now. What are the awards we have on the table? Good, good segue. <laughs> Ryan's going to explain those. Uh, yeah, so we actually received community, best community relations um, again, and then um, another like the team award. Um, so this is a big deal, and I don't know the stat on any teams that have gone back to back on this award, but I believe Arizona has. So I'm not going to get fact checked on that. So we are definitely an elite company of the past two years now. Um, we have been franchise of the year, which is crazy. So, um, yeah. So let's talk about what goes into these two awards. So community relations, really the story behind that is, are you out in your community? Are you doing things with the players, with your organization? Does your community know who you are? Does our community know? 100%. <laughs> uh, we, Christian and I go to a lot of the events. so. Uh, we're happy to be a part of it. Excellent. Good. And franchise, you want to go into? Yeah, that's on field and production and how we help the league. Uh, definitely to do with football as well. Uh, it's just the the benchmark for what a team should be in the IFL, which is really cool. So um, really cool to have it be two seasons in a row. It was actually crazy, um, but really cool because it was 10 home games this year and a lot of work, so it was neat. So. The last two were packed for playoff games in the thick of summer in Wisconsin. So it was, it's cool. That one is, does not get lost on us that that was a two year in a row thing. And uh, actually, both of them, that we get plenty. And that's not an arrogant statement, but we, we are very proud of who we are in the community. Um, this is harder as credible franchises come into the league. Um, new ones that are coming in that are raising the bar constantly in Jacksonville, Tulsa, soon to be Indianapolis. The hockey guys really understand um, that it's more about the sport. So actually it's exciting to watch other teams do theme nights and Star Wars nights and just get to be a student of the game as much as we've led the charge in game ops and stuff. So it's neat. It's really cool. So I sat in that room with five teams with you at one point. It's it's not easy to hang these on the wall anymore, and that's really cool to be recognized by our peers. So absolutely, yep. I think they really go hand in hand, uh, both of them. Uh, you guys keep doing a better job every year, uh, and honestly, as a fan, I kind of wonder how you guys are going to top the year uh, previous. So looking forward to what you have next year. <laughs> yeah, Ryan's already working on that, as he said. Yep. Um, so it, you can't. You know, much like coaching, just because the championship game happened and we plan on bringing players to town March 1 doesn't mean as a coach you don't do anything till right. February 15th. You, Our coach should be recruiting and is recruiting already. All coaches should be 
trying to retain players. You know, you don't wait till it's open season in October. You, you do it now. You you try your best to re-sign whoever you can now. Um, and there's a lot of that happening right now, now that the game is done and um, everybody's, you know, jockeying for position as to where they want to be. I so. do. And uh, yeah, and I want to shout out uh, both the Trinklers for allowing me to create, right? I mean, there are things I definitely don't love. <laughs> it's no secret. Like you're 10 years in and stuff that just doesn't energize you, <laughs> like bookkeeping. And yeah. I do love the creative stuff and I genuinely love the corporate partnership sales. So for Larry and Kathy and allowing me to live in that space um, and nap, Cass and Ben picking up pieces that don't necessarily fill my bucket anymore. Like that we can, there's just stuff as we were smaller that I had to do. Right. And it's crazy to just, it's nuts that it's been 10 years and that, um, but yeah, you're right. We're already working on that stuff. And I do want to shout out the other three that are in the office that free us up and me up to not be in the office all the time and really dreaming stuff up with Cassie and being like, what do you think about this? It's how we keep, reinventing ourselves and at the same time keeping staples like kids night laser show how to refresh it so it's not just the same game next year but it's yeah so shout out to you guys so both in helping bring people on and the right people and shout out to those people for realizing that we can keep moving that stuff forward if they take some of the stuff that i've held on to clung on to for years so yeah right and uh sponsors and interns as well yep. i mean it's not just uh you guys in the office i it's fans, it's everybody across the board, but there's a lot of people that are involved in both of these awards. So really cool to see yeah. your, your organization win these. Yeah, the and you, you touch on a great one there, the the sponsors. There have been so many of our partners, corporate partners, that over the last couple of years have really helped to open up avenues for us. I in particular want to give a shout out to um, our buddy at Green RX, Eric, you you know what you do for our organization. We appreciate everything you do to support our players, um, support our name a little further out from where we are. So he's out in the Madison area, so that's two and a half hours away. Um, we don't want any of those fans going to Indiana or yeah. cities. <laughs> cities. <laughs> um, We'll be but, going. We'll be going just to root for the Blizzard. Correct. Correct. You can go there, but remember your allegiance. Yeah, it um, takes a company like that to trust us with their brand, too. It's one thing for Kathy and I in the front office who did a great job with one of the theme nights we'll unpack in the coming months um, to come up with something ludicrous like, hey, what do you think about us doing this? But then you have to find someone to write a check to support it. And I think that what makes us unique, and maybe it's me unique in how I sell, but like I create the thing and then I work backwards, right? Like it's it's not easy, but it's easier to sell 66 signs and throw a logo on something. It's not easy to be like, oh, we really want this type of business versus let's do this night and find brands and companies and values that fix it, right? And it's the, we, Kathy and I, like we live outside the box and then we try and find somebody to write a check to help us live further outside the box, right? So... And we have some unique things coming up. And like Ryan said, and they'll get all the credit for it when we announce what sure. it is. But um, the front office is just as creative. Yeah. They're just as creative. So um, we look forward to unveiling all of that. It's, it's already ball season. So we are already designing and working on that. Um, you know, the ball orders always have to be done in that by October 1 time frame just because of where they come from. And the time of year that we need them, you know, we want them in that February time frame. Well, Chinese New Year, which is where they usually come out of. Yeah. Um, you know, the the factories that are over there for Wilson and whomever else. Um, so you have to have them in by October, November to be developed. And then, then they shut down. And then when they come back, you know, they got to have them done so that they're to us by that mid-February time frame. So, yeah, shout out to fans, partners, everybody that made these possible because they're, it's cool. So those are, we'd we'd love to have a couple that we're missing on the wall. <laughs> that does sound arrogant, but like these are two that really matter and I'm always proud when we get. So, yeah. I think the one that we really want, I don't know if we're going <laughs> to say the same. We probably will. I want broadcast. <laughs> Is that what you were going to say? No, I was going to say social media. But oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, we're social media. That's, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, clearly yeah. we're watched a lot, so I don't know how we'd miss yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, social media, Ben definitely 
turned us up a notch. Absolutely. Um, we have to get more awareness through the league on social media. Um, but for me, broadcast, and, and that's probably the one that's going to take a joint effort with PMI. It's not that Joey doesn't have a good calling of the game. It's that we have to have camera angles. We have to have better commercials, different commercials, you know, all sorts of different things that have to come into play to do that. Yep. Um, so broadcast would be cool, but yeah, social media would be a great one to have on the wall. Yeah. And I'm sure Bruiser would like to have his yeah. as well. <laughs> He's got that though too. I mean, and yes, you want to keep getting the ones that you that are important or you're known for, but like those are two are actually missing if we're collecting them all like Pokemon. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those we are missing. Anyway. What else? What else do you want to talk about? You're our guest I, today. You know, you know, my favorite episode or my favorite part of an episode is the Rage Cage. <laughs> so if anybody wants to sponsor a Rage Cage, I'm begging for you to sponsor it. <laughs> what do you got for us today? <laughs> So I do, well, so we were traveling, right? And, okay, if you've traveled with me, if you've gone to a movie with me, you know it's there's like an etiquette on the plane. And the last time I traveled, I talked about how the people in the exit row really shouldn't be in the exit row. Yeah, I sat next to two of those people this time, and these poor ladies just looked deer in the headlights when they were told what an exit row means. <laughs> And she turned, the one woman that was sitting next to me turned to me and said, oh, have you ever done this before? And I said, yes, I have. And she said, oh, you have? Like you've traveled or you've opened that door? And I looked at her and I said, I've opened the door. And she went, oh, I don't know that I'd ever travel again if I opened the door. But no, my rage cage is, I, I will say this, from a rage perspective, when you're on a plane be aware of the people around you. I mean, we had these two drunk guys sitting in front of us and they were drunk on the way there. They're drunk on the way back. I get it. You drink in Vegas, you have fun. But they were doing this therapy session between the two of them. And you know how sometimes people get when they're drunk? They're like, <laughs> man, I want you to be here for, you know, when I'm 60 and blah, blah. And I'm like, oh my God, you guys. You really yeah. shouldn't drink that much as he's intoxicated telling <laughs> his buddy that he shouldn't drink so much. But yeah, it's a very weak rage cage. It, was, it, really, <laughs> it was kind of weak. It was weak, <laughs> but I'll take it. You'll take it. So yeah, people can piss me off. That's for sure. But I don't know. We'll see. But yes, we'd love to have a sponsor yeah. of the rage cage. That would be great. Yep. Do we have any? Do we have any anger management people in what Green Bay that we could? Yeah. <laughs> there are rage rooms. They're starting to like close that didn't really take on. So oh, smashing yeah. stuff. Is, people yeah. people yeah. didn't have enough rage yeah, to keep yeah. them I mean, going. Plenty of rage. I guess people want to bring their old printers or <laughs> fax machines to smash up. So <laughs> I did see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that that's the problem with the model. Like you have to bring your own stuff. Like you can't just go there and smash stuff. So oh, I have plenty of stuff yeah. I could give to them. I when actually when I closed the store, I gave them a bunch of stuff oh, nice. and said, "Come and take it. Yep. Come and take it. You can have it all." Yep. So anyway, something else I'm big on is merch. Uh, anything that you guys can discuss or tell us about uh, upcoming? Uh, mm. I know you said there's a lot of new stuff coming down the pipeline. Are we gonna have? Um, like last year where we had a flyer go out, are we going to have an opportunity for purchasing stuff like that again? Yes. What, what flyer went out? Sorry. Uh, or email it was. That was, was. coming. Uh, what was coming. Oh. When we had, yeah, after sure. we went Nap's to the league really meetings. That. Nap's taken the season ticket stuff and moved it farther than I ever could just because of other stuff I had to do. So, yeah, he tries to get you guys ahead of that. So Yeah, there'll be, there'll be new merch, new things. And then, like Ryan said, there's going to be some special opportunities for those of you that have season tickets, not flex, season tickets. You'll have some opportunities beyond the people. It'll also be a unique opportunity to join the season ticket family as long as all goes well with turf and dates and blah, blah, blah. You all know a new field's coming now because Kathy shared that next ep last episode. Kathy shared that next, next episode? episode. Are we in a multi? Um, yeah. <laughs> Do that thing. Yeah. The uh no, so there'll be a real cool 
came to the playoff games, you'll get an email blast when that all transpires, and our season ticket holders will. We're trying to do something cool, but so. So yeah, there, yep. there's new stuff coming. Excellent. We teamed up with some new suppliers within the IFL this season in 24, and those relationships turn up the heat in 25. So there'll be some really cool things coming down the pipeline. And we cleared out a lot of our merch, so we, we do need to <laughs> bring in some new stuff. Absolutely. What you're else wait, you got? For more behind the, you're you're yeah. waiting for me, huh? <laughs> no, yeah, I didn't have, I really, that'll probably be something that is not on my plate besides her and I looking at design, so it'll, Cass and Ben will lead the charge with Joel and these new vendors, so, yep. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. What else you want to know? It's your, oh. t- it's your time. Yeah, it's oh. in probably the second longest episode ever so far. <laughs> <laughs> Second longest. How do Sean's I? Sean's like, it? I'm trying to get a lunch. Yeah. <laughs> I I just wonder who beat me with the first longest. Episode. I don't remember. I mean, we have. I'm not looking back. They're 145. <laughs> That's on you. Go for it. <laughs> I, I do remember uh, some of those first episodes. Yeah, yeah. And we're thankful. I mean, uh, we wouldn't be here today without them. So thank you guys for having me as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for sharing and uh, being a part of our organization. I know. Um, both you and Kristen have been great fans. Um, you know the players. You get invested in the players. You're at our season ticket holder events, making sure that you're part of what we're doing, and we appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and that community of season ticket holders is just amazing. You know, there's people in uh, Stevens Point that we hang out with, mm-hmm. uh, to Eric that you talked about uh, down in Red Granite there, and, um, you know, even the locals uh, like Grandma Sandy and, uh, Preston and Jill, you know, so there's a lot of different fans, but, um, even it's, it's kind of cool because, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I have a family member that's in Arizona that got me into kind of the IFL as well. Um, and he's out in Arizona. So kind of a shout out to him, uh, Butch and I were, uh, a big timber or er, big Rattlers fan, um, watching. So, uh, definitely all over. There. So he's, he's feeling good because his yeah. team came yeah. home with the win. It would have been cool to play against them um in the championship game um and again shout out to kevin on a great a great season and a great win on saturday night yeah we, we've had uh some excellent opportunities as well uh there was an olympic uh speed skater uh you came down one time and said yeah. hello that sat by us so uh without the opportunity of being a blizzard fan um and really for us it's a stress reliever uh we look forward to it every year uh, buying those tickets, making it like a date night, uh, something that we do with our tax return that we know that that's where our money's going right away. So uh, wow. we're thankful. Wow. Well, we we are thankful that you're a part of it. And it, it takes fans like you as well as, you know, even the one game a year fan or people that buy our flex tickets that make sure they can bring 20 people to one game or two games. Um, you know, it takes all kinds uh to be a blizzard nation and and we appreciate that and i think with how we packed the house we had a lot of new fans um those last two games of the season the playoff game so yeah very excited about what comes next year yeah and we had we had an opportunity to help a little girl get a ball uh ej burgess shout out to him uh you know he ran halfway across the field uh to give us a ball to give to a girl so you know like when we're part of that uh those special moments uh it makes us feel good so uh, everybody's really got the opportunity to do it. Uh, so it, it's something that if you want to be a season ticket holder, I would say, you know. Call Nate. Call, call, no, don't call me. <laughs> call, call Ryan. Not nap. Hopsip. Call nap. nap. <laughs> Specify. <laughs> call nap. Call nap. But you can get a testimonial from Nate. Oh, yeah. Ryan doesn't even know what the office looks like right now, thanks to mm-hmm. sports. So <laughs> I know you're big on theme parks. What about Disney and uh, going down there? When's your next trip? Oh, funny you should mention that. Um, I am going to be in Disney for a lot of October, um, but I want to talk about what they announced. Um, they did some great announcements at uh, the D23 this year, um, the meeting. I am a member of D23, and they announced all of the changes to the parks coming up in the next five years. They are creating a villain land. Nice. Can't wait for that. So they're going to be expanding beyond... Uh, Haunted Mansion, the villains will be back there, and then they'll have a bridge over to Cars Land, which is going to be just 
past the railroad um, in Disney World. So very excited about that. So I'll be in Disney in October, probably again in, yeah, in November. We just confirmed that while we were in Vegas. <laughs> Um, so I get to, to catch the Halloween party, and then in November, I'll catch the Christmas party. So pretty excited. Awesome. Yeah. When are you going to join me? Uh, I'm not a big Disney. I grew up on a carnival. So uh, like, so you're more uh, of a carny guy? You do the state uh, fairs? and Not anymore. I, you know, like, it's kind of pushed me away from it. Um, just, uh, I, I rode rides as a kid all the time. So, okay. uh, but yeah. You might like Disney coming up in the next couple of years. It's going to have a new, I think it'll have a new look to it, a new feel. Um, and they had to compete. Ryan and I have talked about this. They had to compete with the new world that's coming to Universal. So with that new park, with Epic, um, they have to do something. It can't be just about young kids anymore. So there's quite a bit that's happening in the Disney in Florida, as well as Disneyland in the next couple of years. I'm more of a cruise guy. Have you ever been on a Disney cruise? Uh, <laughs> okay, just making sure. Several Ryan's even we took Ryan and his girls on a yep. Disney cruise as well. Okay, yeah, they, that is the way to travel. Even if you don't have kids, a Disney cruise I highly recommend. It is a great event based. If you like Disney characters at all or the imagination of Disney, then you will like a Disney cruise. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, what else you got? Uh, I, I'm looking forward to the UWGB, uh, season as well. Uh, we're big, uh, UWGB girls basketball, uh, and volleyball. We got a couple friends on the teams, uh, and that was really cool seeing the collaboration this year, uh, with all those sports teams, uh, coming out to our events at Blizzard. Yeah. And I did notice that, um, on the screen, whenever they talked about build your base, I did see some of our GB girls up there. I saw Ben up there. <laughs> So we definitely got some of our involvement with Build Your Base and the Beef Council um, as part of that championship game. So that was really cool to see. But yes, GB, as you know, Larry and I are big supporters of UWGB and anything that we can do to have a collaboration, again, a community effort um, supporting, supporting those teams that are in Green Bay as well as the multiple fan bases that are out there. Are we going to get Ryan to come to a play with us sometime? And are you active with the Widener Center? I've Not... come to plenty of plays with her, just so we're clear. Like, just, I... I think it's no secret to anybody here. I am a theater musical yes, kid he through is and a geek. through. Like, yes. I played in Pit Orchestra was growing up. I am an Andrew Lloyd Webber fanboy. So, yeah, it's not, it's not that I... Like, it's no different than when her husband invites me to all the GB games that I say no to. It's just a season of life thing right now. Like, I am not kidding. I am probably trying to catch a tennis match and then go back to the office in between here. It is crazy. But Kathy said it best last week. I will miss those opportunities in three years when Caden's in college, right? So, like, it's just a different... I say no not because I can't. I have to right now. Not because I don't want to be at those things. I, li I grew up in that space. I love the Widener, the PAC. So, yep. Yeah, and, and that really amazed me, too, uh, finding out you don't like watching the game. Yeah. Well, you're more <laughs> audio to that. I just, um, I, Kathy and I were talking earlier about, yeah. oh, I can't hear anything on the field. Uh, so it's amazing when uh, somebody just listens to a game. Yeah. Well, he can Weird. tell what's going on okay. by the, yep. the crowd noise, yep. really. So yep. he's, he's getting his input as needed. So awesome. Well, it's that part of the show where we have to figure out how. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to cross arms or are you going to just do I, I, side I love arms? This, I love this part because yeah, I see everybody like go a... like this or like this. I'm just waiting for somebody to miss one time <laughs> and just boop. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> so I, I think I'll do the, the standard cross. The, the standard cross? All right. Yeah. You guys ready? Should we hit him with it? Let's hit him with it. Go Blizz. Go Blizz. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, share, and ring that notification bell to get all of our content in your inbox.